Uh, obviously, tons of great matchups. I'm not sure that this counts as one of them, but it's interesting. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs Sunday night, MetLife Stadium against the beleaguered New York Jets. The Jets offensive coordinator, as you know, is a guy named Nathaniel Hackett, Broncos head coach last year. He was asked about the offensive woes and how they plan on fixing them and who's to blame and all that good stuff. It's the biggest bunch of crap I've heard uh, in the, uh, all week, as a matter of fact. I don't understand why they are so reluctant to say what I know they think, what I know they see, what we all see, and what Zach himself knows about his performance. He's not been very good. So when you ask Nathaniel Hackett about Zach Wilson, at quarterback, why not just say, look, here's the reality. Yeah. We're hamstrung with this kid at quarterback. We have to play call differently. We have to protect differently. And it's negatively impacting our entire offense. Instead, well, it's not just Zach's fault. It's everybody's fault. I don't understand why that's still the messaging. Because they have empathy. And they're sitting around watching us talk about Zach just like the rest of the nation. And so at some point, they try to protect this kid because they have no other options. And you understand, if they go to Tim Boyle or maybe a Trevor Simeon, that's, they're done with Zach Wilson. I don't know how you can bring him back on the field okay. if that's the case. So I think this but is... But let me saying, stop you there. Why do I got to bring him back? Zach Wilson? Well, because at this point, I don't think they know what they have in Tim Boyle. I don't, I don't know I how far they can go back into the crate and keep pulling out quarterbacks when you're trying to get this team to play every Sunday. So I think it's right now, they have to believe in Zach. They have to continue to talk life into Zach. And by the way, his press conference yesterday, I was impressed. With I don't Zach. Know, with Zach. Yes. I thought he handled extremely well. Zach was asked, uh, we're not showing it to you right now, but yes. Zach was asked about the Aaron Rodgers comments. He was asked about the Joe Namath yes. comments. And to his credit, you know, he didn't shy away from it. And he said, my job is to prove everybody wrong. Prove wrong. You know, that they got it wrong, that I am good enough to lead the New York Jets to wins, especially against a tough opponent like the Kansas City Chiefs. It showed maturity, Craig. And, and uh, for me, for looking at this offense, can they be better? But they can be better by exploiting more. More options. So why not do this? Just and I, I may be dead wrong and ask this question. So you know, you know, attack me if you have to. Gotcha. And I'll respect that. Why not then call an offense like you have a real quarterback? Because what I've seen thus far Fair. is an offense that you're not willing to allow Zach Wilson to go out there and make the mistakes they're also afraid of. Because I think the narrative with Zach Wilson is just don't blow the game. Let the defense win it for you. And that's been the story for him since last year. Now you're looking at this team right now that needs more production out of him. And I think he's like, hey, man, you gave me the menu. I'm just trying to follow the script. You want me to be this safe, boring quarterback. Now you want me to be this gunslinger who makes plays in, within the pocket and, and is mobile. Who do you want me to be? So I think he's dealing with an identity crisis. Yeah. I think he doesn't know who he is or what he wants to do with this offense. And I don't think Nathaniel Hackett has any more answers for him. I will well. tell you this. Him being a pocket quarterback is not what that kid is. You know, one of the reasons the Jets who fell in love with him is his ability to get out of the pocket yes. and throw on the run. Yes. Not a lot of quarterbacks do that well. And believe it or not, he, he does actually do does do really that pretty well. well. Uh, not much else, of course. <laughs> but that's about what he does. Here's my very quick take, Jacoby. You know, we all we break this down, and I think we get lazy on it. And we say, oh, Zach Wilson can't beat the Kansas City Chiefs. What about my defense? Right? Well, thus far this year, the Kansas City offense has not been explosive. Granny Kelsey missed the game. I get all that. Their wide receivers don't scare anybody. One guy does, and that's the quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, who, yes, I recognize, can make anybody look like a rock star wide receiver. But I keep being told, and I went back and I checked my notes. Did yeah. your notes? The New York Jets told me over and over and over and over again that we have one of the greatest defenses ever. When do I see that? Like, when do they do their job? And I don't want the excuse of, well, they're on the field for 40 minutes, so you can't expect them. No, no. I can expect them to because they told me that they were that good. When Aaron Rodgers is out, you have Zach Wilson, who we all know is limited as a quarterback. You have Brees Hall and Dalvin Cook. You have to run the ball. And then you go to the defense side. The defense is great. They need to win games for this yes, team. Yes, they do. The way you see other defenses win games. And right now, they've played well, but they haven't tilted a game. No. They, haven't, they haven't been the reason that they put themselves even in a position to win. And that's what they need to do against the Chiefs. Now, I will give them credit. Three interceptions and the fumble recovery against the Bills in right. week one. Yep. And we won that game on a special teams play with Gibson's up punt return, uh, touchdown, and overtime. Uh, that being said, I'd like to see those 11 guys on defense actually dominate a game. You know, you've seen the Chiefs offense struggle. They scored 17 points against the Jaguars, right? The Jets' defense is better than the Jaguar defense. It's time to step up and be the reason you at least have a chance to win. And I'm going to be the only guy in America that's going to say this. 
I don't think the Chiefs blow them out. I don't think you get what you got last night yes, the where it's 27 to 3 at halftime. I agree. I don't I now, I'm not picking the Jets to win obviously. That would be stupid. But I do think the Jets show some pride early on in this game and make it interesting. But I also think it's up to Robert Sala to change his scheme. He plays his cloud defense, Bimba don't break, right? He wants to keep everything in front of him and make them earn their yards. But at this point, your front four hasn't been able to get after the quarterback. Mm -hmm. We watch Aiden Hutchinson. We, we've watched Michael Parsons. We watch all TJ. Yeah. We watch all these guys, to your point, take over games. And they have they don't have a guy on that side of the defense that can do that. So right now, if you're Robert Sala, you have to be more aggressive. If you want the turnovers and you want things to lead the points, you got to start Let's. shooting your bullets. You got to start blitzing. And hopefully you can do that. Because Patrick Mahomes, if you give him time, he's going to kick. Right, we got more on that game later today and a pick uh, for sure from the guys. Uh, real quick, uh, big uh, noon Saturday, and that means Colorado. Yeah. And Colorado again uh, playing uh, the eighth ranked uh, USC Trojans. And that guy right there, the uh, number one pick in this upcoming NFL draft, unless it's the Cardinals pick, of course, and he stays in school. But Colorado <laughs> is a 22-21 point underdog in this game at home. And yet, all the celebrities are still buying in to the Deion Sanders mystique and the magic. You got LeBron and Bronny going. I assume they're on the USC side because the kid goes to USC. That's true. You got Jay-Z there. You got Snoop. You got Lil Wayne who's living out every sports fan's dream <laughs> in the last couple weeks. He's on a tour, weeks, pretty much. Being a Green yeah. Bay yeah, last Matthew night. McConaughey. I don't know why he's what? there. Why he's, he's, scouting. he's scouting for Texas. <laughs> potential, a long potential playoff implications. So, in any event, it has been a great college football story because it's made a lot of people who ordinarily wouldn't watch certain college games yeah. you know, fall in love with, let's see what happens next, with Colorado. The real question for me is this. When USC beats them by 30, oh, which they will, don't it's just one, it's the, you know, that's one game. Which, he shouldn't have lost to Bo Nix in Oregon. Oregon put a whooping on. By the way, I think this is a different game Saturday. By the way, they should have lost to TCU. They should have lost to Colorado State. But give them credit, those kids rallied. And they yeah. pulled those victories out. And I give them credit for it. They are going to lose to USC. There's a reason you're a three-touchdown underdog in your own house. Because you're not as good as USC. Here's the question. When USC blows them out, are we done? Can we put Colorado to are bed? Are we done or are the, is the nation done? Is the nation done? Are the celebrities done? Uh, are we done? Can we put that story to bed for a 3-2 and two unranked team, please? It's the prime effect. You want to see celebrities on the sidelines watching college football. I love it. I love the fact that Deion is preaching life into this, org, uh, this school and that they look like the biggest, you know, the new kids on the block. The problem is it's how they lose, right? We know they're going to lose. But they I give really, up a lot of points. At the I really, I'm really watching the game because I want to see Caleb Williams. Okay. Uh, I, I like oh, Shadour. You're see Caleb Williams. I like Shadour. I think he's good. I don't know if he's on the level as Caleb, but it's good to see them kind of go back and forth. That's the only reason I'm it's, watching the game. See, I, I like the Coach Prime movement. I like the attention that it's garnered. I like the conversation that's built around this. I just don't like that they play Oregon and USC back to back yeah. because it's going it's going to fizzle because you know it's all fun when you have the upset after upset and then you know over to, like late game heroics at two in the morning <laughs> eastern that's all fun but when you when you watch the oregon game that's not fun to watch no, in was... this game they're gonna get blown out in this game too and then we're not gonna be talking about it anymore. but both teams don't have a defense now usc's defense is nothing to like yeah. wow over and by the way to answer that question at the bottom of the screen yeah it ended last week guys like oh. you know they, they barely got put points on the board outside of the last drive of the game against oregon the Cinderella Cinderella lost her but it's technically boys. not over because you uh, got stars showing up for the game. Why? Because they want to see a because show. Because they're playing a team they're, from they're Los still, Angeles. That's why. And if I could just ask one other quick question, and they're yelling at me to take a break, so we will. <laughs> and we'll get to the Dallas Cowboys in one second. If you have a premier game, that is going to attract a huge audience, and I'm sure it will. Because You're going to watch it. Uh, I will not watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be in Grinnell, it's Iowa. On it's on Fox. It's on No, no. Here's the reality, though. Uh, you threw me off I'm my sorry, game right I'm sorry, there. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll come up with it at some point. <laughs> uh, totally forgot. I apologize. I, I, I was going to say. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out too.